I'd like you to think about your face for a moment. You look at it every morning when you brush your teeth, and it's a huge part of your self-identity, as well as how we recognize and interact with each other. Now, birth defects that affect development of the face are called craniofacial defects. An example is cleft lip and cleft palate. Now, these make up a third of all birth defects, so they're extremely common. And they can be particularly devastating because they can impair a child's ability to speak, to eat, and even smile. Currently, the only way we can treat these defects is surgery. And I don't just mean one surgery. Children affected typically have to undergo multiple invasive surgeries throughout their early childhood development to fix these defects. So there's a tremendous economic as well as psychological burden, not only on the affected child, but also their family. But what if we could intervene before these defects have happened and prevent their development? Imagine the impact that could have. That's the goal of my research. So I study cilia. And these are tiny hair-like organelles that you've probably learned about in your high school biology class in the context of tiny microorganisms that use them to move around. But it turns out these cilia are actually very important for human development. There are cilia in your lung that help move mucus and pathogens out of your lung to prevent infection. And there are another type of cilia present on almost every cell type of your body. But these cilia don't move. They're immotile, and they act as the cell's antenna. They take in information from outside of the cell, and they transmit that information to instruct cellular decisions. These immotile cilia are critical for development of your face. If you have too little signaling through these cilia, effectively a broken cellular antenna, this leads to cleft lip and palate, as well as a dramatic narrowing of the face. My thesis sets out to figure out why and how. And I found three major things. First, I figured out when these defects first happen. It turns out they happen very early on during development of the embryo, before any structure resembling a head or a face is formed. Two, I found that this early defect results in massive cell death in the cells and tissues that will ultimately form the face. And three, most importantly, I figured out a way to prevent these defects from happening. How did I do it? I targeted a receptor that goes to the cilia and keeps signaling levels down. By removing one copy of the gene that codes for this receptor, I was able to prevent this massive cell death, prevent cleft lip and palate, and restore normal facial development. These exciting results give us new insights into how cells use their antenna to communicate and bring us one giant step forward in the hopes of translating these results from the mouse to the human. Thank you.